Welcome in to Duval Daily, presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thank you so much for tuning in here. We've got more draft news. Your Jacksonville Jaguars, they have a meeting scheduled with Quentin Johnston, TCU wide receiver. Uh, look, these, these pre-draft meetings doesn't always mean that the team has a direct interest in the prospect they're meeting with. They could be trying to get information on a different prospect. They could be doing all sorts of different things. But uh, we will take this one at face value. That's what we've been doing here so far with these pre-draft meetings with the Jaguars. And so I'm just going to break down the type of prospect Quentin Johnston is, his short and long-term fit with the Jaguars, look at the value of where he could potentially go to the team, uh, look at potentially uh, does this make sense as a need. We'll talk about all that fun stuff right here, right now. I'd like to remind you to hit me up on Twitter at Jordan DeLugo. You can also follow Generation Jaguar at Generation Jag. And please go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button here. Really appreciate y'all tuning in and really helps the show grow. So without further ado, Quentin Johnston. Uh, this is a guy that I've been on for a really long time. A lot of fun as a receiving prospect. Uh, just under six foot three, 208 pounds, 33 and a half inch arms. That is huge for a receiver. Great length, pretty big hands as well. 40 and a half inch vert through the roof. 1102 broad, unbelievable. Shows off the explosiveness. 448 40 yard dash at 63208. Flying out there. This is a big, explosive receiver with a huge wingspan, big catch radius, tremendous yak ability. Um, also, he, he fights for extra yards pretty consistently. He has some twitch once he gets the ball in his hands as a ball carrier. And, of course, he's got the speed to take it the distance anytime he touches the football. Um, hands, at times, are questionable. That's, that's something that you cannot overlook in this scouting report. Oftentimes, uh, when you're watching him on tape, uses his body to help reel in the football, to help bring the ball in and secure it. And while there are some absolutely insane contested catches on tape, like they, there are, they're not hard to find. Far too often, you're left wanting a little bit more, and you see some of these chances down the field end up being incompletions, um, a 40% contested catcher. So that's not horrible by any stretch, but when you're looking at a guy that's six foot three, over 200 pounds with that type of wingspan, you would expect closer to 50% or even higher from a guy like Quentin Johnston. And so that just that shows the uh, the rawness a little bit as a pass catcher. And I do think you can improve there. There's no question about it. He has the skill to improve in that regard. But he's going to need to do that at the next level. Uh, but bottom line, he's a home run threat down the field and as a shallow receiver, right? Uh, he can beat you deep. He can get past your guys that are trying to press him. Um, and if you're running shallow crossers, which the Jaguars love to do, if you're running over routes, I think he can be a menace on that type of stuff as well. Not super effective in the intermediate to deep middle of the field. You sometimes see some alligator arms in that area of the field. He, he's kind of bracing for those big hits from safeties. So you, you're going to want to see him improve upon that as well. But overall, as a prospect, I see this guy as you know a top three receiver in this class. A guy that has unbelievable potential. Yeah, there is a little bit of a floor here when you talk about his his route running in terms of the nuance of his route running. I don't think that he can't run routes. It's just that he hasn't had to run a ton of them in TCU's offense. Definitely has not run the full route tree. And then again, the hands, um, while I think it's clear that there is ability to be a, a tremendous hands catcher within Quentin Johnston, like you see examples of him catching the ball away from his frame, extending to go grab a football Far too often you see him trying to use that body to reel the football in. Um, but yeah, for me, wide receiver three in this class, they just guys like this just don't grow on trees. You don't have guys that can run sub four or five forty at six foot three, two hundred and eight pounds with that type of wingspan and this type of explosiveness uh, just popping out at every draft class. It's just not there all the time. And you look at his production. One thing about him I think is so impressive. He was the TCU passing game. And I think uh, a lot of times when you talk about Quentin Johnston, you have to talk about Max Duggan as to their quarterback. Not a super accurate quarterback. Not always on time. I think if you paired Quentin Johnston up with a more um, 
professional quarterback, you know, a guy with a better arm, with better accuracy, better timing, you could be looking at a much different type of prospect if he was playing with with these other quarterbacks from around the country that that are a little bit more talented than Max Duggan is as passers. Uh, For me, value, does he present value at 24 overall where the Jaguars are drafting? Because make no mistake about it, you're not getting him after that. If you're talking about the Jaguars trying to get a receiver at 56, 88, uh, day three of the draft, Quentin Johnson's not in play there, right? It would have to be in, at 24 overall or potentially maybe a trade up, maybe a trade down. You could see Quentin Johnston. Would the value be there? Yes, I believe the value is there on Quentin Johnston as a prospect in a vacuum for the Jaguars in the mid-20s. Now, is it a need for the Jaguars? Absolutely not. The Jaguars are loaded at receiver right now. You have Calvin Ridley. Ever heard of him? Christian Kirk. Ever heard of him? Zay Jones is the wide receiver three right now. And then you've also got Jamal Agnew. You've got a couple guys that you feel really good about that are younger players and Tim Jones and Kendrick Pryor. So yeah, no, it's not a need. Uh, The Jaguars don't need Quentin Johnston to field a complete football team. He would be a... He'd be the type of pick that really just that uh, elevates your wide receiver room for sure, but more of a luxury pick than a need pick. Uh, is that okay? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not a I'm not a a guy that values need in the draft. I, I much more prefer to go after the best possible prospects that you can get into your organization. Um, and yeah, he he would have a an a short-term impact that for me, when you talk about his short-term impact with Trevor Lawrence, throwing him the football with Calvin Ridley and Christian Kirk and Zay Jones and Evan Ingram, um, kind of taking attention away from Quentin Johnson. I think it'd be a perfect landing spot for him as a prospect because so many of these receivers that, uh, have the type of talent that Quentin Johnston have, has but need development. They get drafted by a team that expects them to go be wide receiver one from day one. There's not a really great infrastructure around them usually. For Quentin Johnston, that would not be the case here. I mean, at best, he would be wide receiver three during his rookie year. That would mean he beat out Zay Jones for that spot. Obviously, Calvin Ridley's your wide receiver one. Christian Kirk is your slot star. Then you've got Zay Jones. Quentin Johnson would basically be likely battling with Zay Jones for reps in a lot of in a lot of situations. So he'd be in a situation where he's not expected to come in and be wide receiver one. He'd be dropped into a an offense led by Doug Peterson, who is just a wizard on that side of the ball. He'd have a quarterback in Trevor Lawrence who knows what he's doing now and is ready to ascend into top five, top three at the position, it looks like, with everything going on around him. So yeah, Quentin Johnson, he'd be dropped into a role where he could just grow into this offense and into his role in the offense. So I think that'd be great. And short-term impact, what could he do for the Jaguars? He adds explosiveness. He adds big play potential. He makes you a team that is really, really difficult to game plan for because you just can't. Like If you try to take away Calvin Ridley and, or Evan Ingram or Christian Kirk and then you've still got Zay Jones and, and, and Quentin Johnston to deal with, it's a, it's a nightmare. And then you throw in the fact that the Jaguars have a pretty loaded backfield right now. Travis Etienne, um, J- um, Jamichael Hasty, Dearness Johnson, Snoop Connor. They've been looking at some of the running backs in this draft class. You know, they've met with Ty J Spears, Kendra Miller, Dwayne McBride. I think that it would be it would be huge for the Jaguars' offense, and it would just make them that much more difficult to deal with when the games count, when you're you're playing to win your division, when you're playing to win a playoff game. I think his presence would make the Jaguars much more difficult to deal with. He can be a vertical threat, he can be a horizontal threat, and I also think he would be a red zone threat for you in a big way. Long term impact. I mean, he's a potential top 10 X receiver in the league. He's he's a prototype X receiver, just has a little bit of developing to do uh, in regards to his hands and in regards to his route running, you know, being able to run the full route tree. But some guys, you just don't need them to run the full route tree. You know, DK Metcalf, let's talk about that. This is a guy that just wins on the vertical plane. Could Trevor Lawrence use a receiver like that? Absolutely. 
And then you also look at the Jags. They're not going to want to pay three receivers uh, the type of money that they're paying. They're going to have to pay Christian Kirk, uh, Calvin Ridley, and Zay Jones, right? Ridley's still on his rookie deal, fifth year option of his rookie deal, but you're going to have to figure out how to pay him to keep him around. You're already paying Christian Kirk a ton. You're already paying Zay Jones starter money. Eventually, you're not going to be wanting to pay all three of those contracts. Maybe you're able to get cheaper at one of those spots and have a Quentin Johnston just step in and and be ready to go for you when when you're when you decide to move on from one of those receivers, which in my opinion would likely be Zay Jones. Um, but yeah. This is a guy that has the potential to be a Pro Bowl receiver in this league, and that's why you see the value here. Uh, for me, this would be a we are going all in on this passing attack. We are not going to be stopped in 2023. Like that would be the mindset that Trent Baalke and Doug Peterson would be would be bringing into this type of pick. Um, I'd be good with it for sure. But you better have a plan for that defense, right? You still need an edge rusher or two. You still need a nickel cornerback. You still need depth at corner. Uh, so the Jags, if they went and went ahead and pulled off a bombshell type of move like this, drafting a Quentin Johnston, it'd be fun. But you got to make sure you've got everything else taken care of. And now the ultimate question is, will the Jaguars pull the trigger on a Quentin Johnston or another talented receiver? This early in the draft, personally, it would it would shock me because they have three really good receivers. They have Jamal Agnew, who is an excellent receiver in my opinion and playmaker on offense, and you know one of the very best kick returners in the game. And you've also got Tim Jones and Kendrick Pryor, who they feel really good about. So I would be shocked if the Jags went receiver at a spot where where they would be able to get Quentin Johnson again, which would be twenty four overall, but. Would I be okay with it? Absolutely. I mean, you're going to go scorched earth on the NFL. That's the plan you want to, you want to go into this season with? I'd be absolutely fine with it. Good luck stopping it. Good luck. If you've got Calvin Ridley, Christian Kirk, Quentin Johnston, Zay Jones, Evan Ingram, Travis Etienne, Dearness Johnson, Jamichael Hasty, and maybe another rook, rookie running back in that backfield, yeah, good luck. With Trevor Lawrence throwing the football and Doug Peterson orchestrating it, I don't think any team is going to be able to compete with that defensively. I'll tell you that much right now. We'll see if the Jaguars be that bold. I don't think they will be, but we'll see. It'd be a bold move, and this is the bold new city of the South, ain't it? We'll see how it all plays out, but just wanted to update y'all on the latest report of Jaguars meeting with another prospect for the 2023 draft class. Aaron Wilson uh, out of Houston is reporting that the Jaguars will meet with wide receiver Quentin Johnson, projected first-round pick, would be just a hell of a swing by this team. I don't see it happening, but I'd be here for it. Thank you all so much for tuning in here to Duval Daily on Friday. Hope you all have a great weekend this weekend. Hope everybody has a fun time. Um, you can hit me up on Twitter, at Jordan DeLugo, Generation Jag, we're at Generation Jag. Hit that like and subscribe button here on YouTube. If you want to support the channel further, you can check out genjag.com, pick up some new Duval gear. If you're listening on your podcast platform of choice, please review and subscribe. Couldn't be doing this without y'all. Again, really appreciate you, and I hope you have a great weekend, Duval.